Hey, everyone. I just thought I'd try a silent introduction. Now let me finally get my transformer robot safely back. But I've always been into robots. Let me go grab a couple more here that I have. And so I've been following this field technology for a very long time. It is near and dear to my heart. And today, so I'm pretty stoked to tell you about my number one robot stock. But as usual, before I get going, quickly, disclaimer time. Whatever you're watching, hearing, and if you follow through on the next slide, um, anything from my Substack, Twitter, YouTube, my Bald Man Speculating Podcast, Instagram, Facebook, not investment advice. We have not considered your first personal financial Position, risk, profile, assets, income, age, etc. We are just talking about investment ideas. These represent my opinion, information, engagement, entertainment. Any reference to past performance doesn't mean that future results are guaranteed. There is simply no certainty in uh, in the stock market or in any market or the crypto markets. Errors, mistakes, oversights, yeah, we're human, we make them. Uh, capital loss is a likely outcome. This is true when you trade, when you speculate, when you invest. There's always the possibility that you might lose money. You are not guaranteed to make money. Lastly, I, the owners, contractors, employees, associate, associates of ATG Digital Media, what we own, trade, transact in the investments that are the subject of these videos and that are in our substacks, or if I reference them in any of the other media that I mentioned. And before we get going on this topic, hey, a quick plug for my business, atgdigital.media. That's our website. Subscriptions begin at $9.99. If you are not ready to spend money yet, you want to try it out, read some of the investing that we do, how we look at the world, what we are seeing right now, examples of stocks, you know, from this channel, you know, we act, we don't tease you. We don't you know, play around. We actually tell you about the stocks that, you know, we are interested in, what we understand about them, why we like them, and what we are doing. All right. So the subject of this video is not like actually this kind of a robot. Oh, my God, this is heavy. Uh, not this kind of robot, it's a slightly different robot. And the reason why my focus is on this slightly different type of robot is the robotics that that enhance sort of human abilities, human activities. And the reason why I'm focusing on this particular style, part of robotics is because one of the critical issues that's kind of really setting the agenda for finance, economics, interest rates, money, and I believe it's, you know, in the stock market is this labor shortage, especially for physically demanding jobs. If you go and talk to employers, they will tell you they are having a very, very tough time trying to get folks to do jobs that are physically demanding. And so... The technology that we're going to focus on in this video, exoskeletons, um, well, this kind of technology really perfectly is perfectly placed uh, to uh, to address this labor shortage uh, because it. Well, let me get to the next slide rather than getting ahead. Um, because let me explain what are ex exoskeletons. Ex um, so it's a wearable robotic suit with an integrated system of computers. So you've got computers that sort of like, you know, help uh, enhance uh, human activity. So what kind of enhancements? Well, they improve mobility. Uh, if you go and Google for this, or maybe if you go on YouTube, you'll see a lot of examples of exoskeletons um, allowing for people, human beings to move faster, more efficiently, uh, so that, you know, you reduce injury. 
handle unusual positions or terrain. Like imagine, you know, standing very high up on a ladder. We've all experienced this. I mean, it would feel a lot more secure if somehow we were magically able to get extra length so as to not have to climb ladder, not have to deal with, oh, am I going to fall? You know, where do I position my feet? Uh, we could do this a lot safer with an exoskeleton, uh, especially in the workplace where, again, injuries can be greater. The cost of um, damage is much greater. So, all right, next thing is improve function. Now, this one's easy to see. Like, if you ever have seen, like, an auto um, assembly line, you'll see people that are you know, doing this. I mean, the car sits above them. That's not the danger is that, you know, they're constantly lifting their hands and it's a lot of stress on here and through here. So uh, lifting heavy weights made easier. You can lift heavier weights because the body is not the one that's taking all the weight. The exoskeleton sort of takes all that weight uh, off you. So uh, you can do that without injury. I mentioned being taller increasing your reach, both by hand, vertical, and up here, uh, extra strength. I mean, and it improves productivity, which if you have a labor shortage going, you need to be able to really do more with less. With the same number of people, you need to address the, you know, all these different situations where before you could hire more people. You can't do that today. It's either too expensive or people are simply not available. So you, it improves productivity, fewer injuries, less fatigue. Uh, and then there's a fun factor. I mean, just imagine having like these kind of bionic powers. I mean, I mean, it's like, you remember the old bionic man uh, and the bionic woman? Better, stronger, faster. <laughs> they had those kind of superpowers well you put on the exoskeleton you have a little bit of that you have a little bit of that it, it makes you move in a way that is bionic so it's pretty cool so there's a fun factor which is important if you're a company and you're trying to recruit people and people are like oh i don't want to work in that and they're like well we get to you know wear these exoskeletons and it's going to be super cool you get to do this and you're like oh maybe that sounds kind of fun all right um, the exoskeleton market, when you go research it, it is tiny, puny. I mean, you know, when you consider that, you know, Apple is a $2.2 trillion company, the exoskeleton market, all the companies put together are a, oh my gosh, that's like, or just about $493 million, at least according to this study, which you know, you'll see up there. Um, but the same folks that came up with those numbers their research suggests that you know um, exoskeleton usage adoption is set to surge. And I believe that's related to what I laid out, which is this labor shortage is making manufacturing companies around the world think like, hey, what can we invest in? Yeah, they could do the traditional robots, but there are many things that those robots cannot do. We're talking about the mechanized robots that, you know, that mostly fill most people's minds when you talk about robotics. Well, there's a lot of things that simply they can't do. They don't have the dexterity. They don't have the capability that a person does or the decision-making. They can only do very repetitive routine tasks again, again, again. Anything outside of that, you need a person. You need a person. So, uh, these folks are suggesting that there is going to be a surge from this 493 million to nearly $14 billion. Now, $14 billion by itself, truthfully, is not like a huge market, but focus on the growth, folks. 45% a year from 2022 to 2029. In other words, this is unfolding. You certainly wouldn't know it if you looked at the stocks that are in this, but that's not unusual. Now, the stock market you know, is driven by its own dynamics and mechanics. And it's only over some number of years that you tend to see these kinds of things really reflected. So the outlook is absolutely, absolutely huge, absolutely massive and surging as we speak. If that study is right, and if what I've said to you about the global labor shortage is correct, uh, what are the uses of exoskeletons? Well, uh, we're gonna put up a few things. Um, 
uh, industry and business. Uh, we have the story about you know, John Deere uh, using it. I've, I've known that Ford has a program. There are any number of manufacturing companies that have sort of like, you know, pushed into it. But with this global labor shortage really starting to become a major, major factor for companies around the world. I mean, it doesn't really matter where you are. This is an issue around the world. Well, this could become the sort of the modern tool set of 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 the you know of the current era. I remember, I mean, you know, there was a time when nobody knew what a toolbox was, didn't exist, and then you know people used to come into work with 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 a toolbox, and an exoskeleton could be the toolbox of the modern era. So, um, in defense and army, we will put that up. Um, folks in defense and army security, I mean, you know, they're always doing physically demanding things. So to reduce wear and tear on the body, this is a absolutely perfect technology. Would not surprise me that over the next three to five years, it just became standard sort of, you know, military issue. Everyone has an exoskeleton. And then finally in health, uh, there's any number of health conditions where you lose the ability to use a limb and exoskeletons can really bring back some amount of the ability that you used to have prior to your injury. So those are the three main areas. All right. Um, when you go and look at the exoskeleton business, uh, the shocking thing is that there's no big company in this. Um, I mean, I, you know, Tesla has this Tesla bot, which they are developing for the reasons that I laid out, which is this global labor shortage to do physically demanding jobs. Um, and then Google used to have some investments uh, in robotics, actually, truthfully, I don't know if they have them anymore. They used to own a company called Boston Dynamics, but that's not an exoskeleton. Uh, but Google has made a lot of investments, so it's possible that they may have something. But truthfully, there's really not a lot. Uh, and then one of the companies that you know that is in the exoskeleton business, they bought the one sort of larger company that was in the exoskeleton business, Parker Hannafin. Uh, I mean, they didn't buy Parker Hannafin. They bought Parker Hannafin's exoskeleton business. So as far as I can tell, there's only like three direct plays on exoskeletons. There may be more. And if you know of more, please put it in the comments below so I can research it. But more or less, as, as far as I can find, publicly traded, these seem to be the three. Cyberdyne in Japan. And the key to Cyberdyne is that this is brain connected exoskeleton. In other words, you know, whatever you attach to your body will move, will do things based on what's going on in your brain, like how. That's what that was actually made by Cyberdyne. Cyberdyne doesn't trade in the US and you got to buy it using a very illiquid uh, uh, stock, which, uh, hey, if you want to do that, you go for it. But there's no liquidity in meaning that if you go, you buy it, it's quite easy to buy. Uh, you know, there's always somebody willing to sell stuff to you. But when you want your money back, well, it's much harder. That's called liquidity. So that's that's pretty tough. But that's the biggest company in this industry, $465 million. From there, we're talking about like nano, 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 nano cap companies. Like, you know, you got Exobionics, which has been around for a long time, by the way. You know, I mean, these these comp this technology has been in development for a very long time. You could say the same thing for all robotics. But Exobionics is, is a market capitalization of $20 million. $20 million. This is not like a, this is not even a rounding error for Apple. I mean, I think their rounding errors are bigger. Uh, and then Rewalk Robotics is, uh, is an Israeli company. Uh, and they are, they have a market capitalization of $36 million. Now I say Israeli company, I mean they're based out there, but they're a global company and their primary markets are in all the great economic centers of the world. I'm sure they sell some in, in, in Israel as well, but these are all sort of like global companies. So before I sort of tell you my number one robotic slash exoskeleton stock, um, hey, the two stocks that trade in the US, I mean, these are small, these are small. So, you know, there's risks, there's rewards. Let's go through the risks, all right? Well, these are tiny, tiny companies. So. If you buy a lot of these stocks and then you want to sell it all at once, there's no market for anyone that you know wants to sell. You know, even I'd say on any given day, there's probably a best case scenario this trades thirty, forty thousand dollars of stock. I mean, you know, so if you buy a lot of the something and you want to get out, you ain't getting out for anything near what you paid because 
uh, there's nobody there on the other side. Um, second, from a business perspective, um, uh, they're, they're small companies. They're going to need cash in all likelihood to continue to develop both the technology, the platform, uh, to commercialize it. So uh, they, they they could you know really be in cash distress, um, and uh, that's a genuine risk for you know all any small and growing company. Uh, the other thing is that perhaps I'm wrong. Maybe you know uh, the manufacturers of the world figure out some other way to address this global uh, physical you know labor shortage, uh, and it doesn't get adopted, uh, or the the technology also doesn't sort of continue to develop at a rate that makes it worthwhile for folks to develop it. Uh, rewards? Well, uh, I mean, given how small this industry is, and given how wide the potential application is, I mean. You're potentially catching it like at like the bottom. I mean, 20 million, 36 million for these stocks, um, the entire industry being worth less than half a billion dollars. Mm, yeah, small, low, potentially, you know, big, big gains if everything, you know, unfolds in the direction as I have laid out. All right, so what's my number one? exoskeleton robot stock. I mean, I laid out why this is, you know, not like my favorite robot technology to invest in right now. Well, it's WeWalk Robotics. Why? Well, I mean, the stock price is low, but as you know, stock price is, you know, not everything. You got to look at the market capitalization. And the market capitalization is also low. It's $36 million. So this is a small, small, small company with, of course, a also low cost price. But why am I, let's say, you know, essentially it's down to two. And I have to be truthful, both of both Exobionics and WeWalk are in uh, our diamond tier portfolio at ATG Digital Media. That does not go for $9.99 straight up. So I'll let you know. The small company is uh, the microcap service is our more, it's the most expensive service that we offer. But um Rewalk, I prefer for now uh, because, well, they have sales growth, as does EXO as well, but they've got a lot more cash. Uh, Rewalk has $67.9 million in cash. So, I mean, they've got nearly double the amount of cash than what you know, the stock market says that their company is worth. So that's often... A sign of cheapness, but you know, right now with cash being tight everywhere, this is something that I've been focusing on for all of the companies that that we're in. Um, innovation companies, growth companies, they need cash. So to have sixty-seven million dollars right now, uh, they've got no cash worries, and their business is growing. You can see it was small. I put up this thing. It's like yeah, in the fourth quarter of last year, two point two million. So this is a small company, but hey. If the adoption is anything like what I think it can unfold or those growth estimates, 45% a year, I mean, growth investors will value based on growth and they will pay some huge multiple. So I don't know, two, three years out. Remember, in bull markets, investors look forward. So the projection for sales will be whatever, 20 or 30 million. So let's say 10 times sales, 20 times sales. You're talking about big, humongous, massive gains. Those are the types of gains that we go after at ATG Digital Media and that we talk about in my Substack. Uh, so check us out. And if none of that sounds good, well, hey, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Thank you. This is Paul saying, 